Hey guys, um, so I'm going to talk kind of quiet in this video just to preface because I have Porter sleeping in the bassinet next to me. He's, I mean babies usually sleep through a lot of noise but I'm just going to keep it a little quieter because I don't want to wake him up. But this is Porter's birth story and so I wanted to get this video recorded while it's still fresh in my memory. Um, today, Porter is one week old, so one week ago, I gave birth to Porter, and I want to tell you about how it went down. I am so, so bummed I didn't get any footage of my labor and delivery with Porter. I had it all planned out. If you've been following me, you will know that we had an induction scheduled for Thursday, September 17th. That was going to be his birthday, and so I had it all planned out. We were going to record going to the hospital and and uh, being in labor and maybe the delivery and all of that things, and this just threw everything out the window because Porter was born on Monday the 14th, three days prior. So let me tell you about what happened. Um, that day at 4.30 in the morning, I was woken up to what I guess now I would say were um, contractions. Um, I thought they were just kind of painful Braxton Hicks, but they were so painful that I had to get up out of bed and I actually went downstairs and just kind of sat and sat through them. And they lasted for a good hour or two. And um, I didn't really think anything of it. I didn't time them or anything. I just was more annoyed that I wasn't getting sleep. Um, and so those lasted for a while, um, but eventually around 6.30 a.m. I was able to come back upstairs. They kind of went away and fizzled out, and I was able to go back to bed for about an hour until Grayson got up and I got up with him. That day was kind of normal. I was busy. Um, I took Grayson to the park. I went and picked up groceries. I went and got a COVID test. And all throughout the day, I kind of was feeling... Um, painful Braxton Hicks just like on and off but nothing like super consistent and so I really didn't think anything of it. It wasn't until 6 p.m. that night that things kind of got like took a turn for more serious I guess you could say. Um, I was making dinner that night and the contractions started up which I didn't think they were contractions at that point. I thought they were just, again, Braxton Hicks that were getting a little bit painful. But they started becoming so regular that I actually started timing them. And um, they were kind of coming kind of consistently, like every five to six minutes. Here and there, there would be like an 11 minute break in between contractions or seven minutes or something, but for the most part they were coming like five minutes apart. But again, I didn't think anything of it. I thought it was just Braxton Hicks. I just was in total denial. I had it set in my mind that he was going to be born on Thursday the 17th. He was not going to be born on the 14th. Little did I know what was about to happen. So I was making dinner, and the contractions got so bad that I actually ended up going and finding Anthony. He had taken a nap. He had worked from home that day, finished, and then he was taking a nap in our bed. I went and woke him up, and I said, can you finish dinner? I've almost finished it. It just needs a couple more things. And while you do that, I'm going to go and give Grayson a bath. Oh, and by the way, I'm having painful contractions or Braxton Hicks. I think I called them Braxton Hicks. And Anthony was like, are you timing them? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, how far apart are they? And I was like, well, about five minutes apart. And he was like, isn't that what they say to look out for? Like the 511 rule? And I'm like, well, it hasn't been an hour yet. And I just, I don't think it's going to happen. And Anthony, for whatever reason, and thank goodness he did, he knew things were about to happen. And so while I'm sitting there on the floor with Grayson, dealing with these contractions that are getting more and more painful, Anthony is running around. He ate dinner, put dinner away. He, um, I was in the middle of laundry, so he moved the laundry over so that it wouldn't um, get uh, stay wet. It would dry. 
he packed everything up he put in pto at work and told work like i'm not coming in like this baby is coming um and he just basically ran around and did all that meanwhile i'm in the bathroom with grayson bathing him i'm still in denial but these contractions are starting to get really painful and so now i'm starting to wonder what's going on so i'm sitting there i end up having anthony finishes all of this stuff i end up having him finish giving grayson a bath and um and i and he puts him down for the night so it's like seven o'clock seven fifteen ish at this point um, I went downstairs, I went to go sit in the rocking, we have a recliner, and so I tried to put my feet up because I was like, maybe if it is Braxton Hicks, then me putting my feet up and drinking some water will help it go away. So I went down there and um, putting my feet up did not work. The contractions were still happening and getting painful. And I had really never felt contractions before when I was pregnant with Grayson. I was induced and so I had waited until I felt like one or two contractions and then I was like okay that's enough for me and so I went and got an epidural and then that was that I didn't feel anything else so I really didn't have much to compare what I was feeling to and honestly like yes they hurt but it wasn't like I was gonna die that was coming later <laughs> but yeah they would just come every so often and yeah they started to hurt but, I don't know, I just, again, I was just in denial. So Anthony finishes putting Grace into bed. He comes downstairs and he said, I, it, this is time, like, is it time? Are we gonna, like, is this gonna happen? And I was still in denial, like, I don't know. And he was like, I think you should call your parents and have them come over here. I think we need to go to the hospital. And I was starting to agree with him, like, these aren't going away. They are starting to get more painful. Maybe we should go and have it looked up. So I um, finally, after Anthony was begging me, begging me, call your parents, I finally did. I called them. Thankfully, they were in town, and so they weren't far away. And I called my mom, and she picked up, and I said, I think I might be in labor. And she was like, well, tell me, like, what are you experiencing? And I was like, I think I'm having contractions. They're coming by every five minutes it's getting painful and mom's my mom was like yeah i definitely think you're in labor you need to go to the hospital and at that point i was still like iffy about it like i don't know and she was like you need to call your doctor's office or call the hospital call someone so i hung up with her call my doctor's office it's like after hours of course it's like seven o'clock at this point and so um i got their automated machine that said like if it's an emergency call 911 um and so that didn't help so i hung up on that i called the hospital, got connected to labor and delivering, got on the hold with the nurse, and I said, I've never been through labor before, but this is what I'm experiencing, and the nurse was like, honestly, uh, you don't sound like you're in pain, you're talking to me just fine, I feel like if you were truly in labor, then you would not be able to have a conversation with me right now, and I was telling her, like, well, I'm not having a contraction right now, like, I'm in in between contractions that's why I can talk to you right now and she was like I mean it's totally up to you you can come we're obviously not going to turn you away I just would hate for you to get here and then we check you out and then we end up turning you away because you're not far enough along and so I was kind of discouraged after that phone call so I hung up with the nurse called my mom back and explained to her what the nurse said and my mom's like no you should still go and Anthony says the same no we should still go so I was like, okay, fine, fine, let's just do it. So my parents were like, we're, we'll come, we're on the way, we'll be like there in like 10 minutes. And we were like, oh yeah, that's fine, take your time, like we're not in a rush, we're still finishing packing everything, not a big deal. And they were like, okay, great. So Anthony and I were getting ready to leave. I told him, okay, I'm going to go upstairs, check the bags, make sure we have everything packed that we need, and then we can go. And he was like, okay, fine. So I walked to the hallway and I was at the bottom of the stairs and then all of a sudden it was like a light switch and all of a sudden my contractions got super duper painful super painful so painful that I was screaming it hurt so bad like it's crazy how night and day like the contraction before that it was like kind of painful but whatever I was dealing with it this one I was screaming screaming at the top of my lungs because it hurt 
so bad. And that's when Anthony knew, like, oh shoot, and I knew, oh shoot, we're in trouble. So I got through the, through the contraction, and um, I told Anthony, I said, we need to go. We need to go right now, because I knew this was getting bad, and it was coming fast. And so I didn't go upstairs. I headed for the car. I didn't even have shoes on. Anthony got me into the car. I was like, I need shoes. And he was like, you don't need shoes. I was like, no, I need shoes. You need to go get that. So he ran inside. He got me shoes, threw shoes at me. I was dealing with another contraction in the car, so I couldn't even put my shoes on at that moment. He went upstairs, got all the bags. I called my mom back, and I was like, where are you? And this was probably like maybe five minutes later. And my mom was like, we're on the way, we're almost there. And I'm like, okay, it's, these are getting really, really bad. We need to go now. And so my parents are like, just go. We're almost there, just go. Just go, don't even think about it. And so I was like, okay, fine. So I hung up on them. So I have the call log on my phone, phone from when I called my mom. The first time I called my mom, it was at 7.48 p.m. And that was me saying like, oh, I might be in labor, blah, blah, blah. And that lasted for 54 seconds called my mom again at 8 o'clock so it had been 12 minutes past and we were about to leave because I was screaming from contractions so in the span of 12 minutes my contractions had ramped up like crazy so I just wanted to add that Anthony came and he was like we need to go and I was like yeah we need to go now so we left the house left Grayson he was sleeping I think he was sleeping unless my screaming woke him up which it might have I keep hearing Porter move and so I'm like oh, I hope I'm not waking him up anyway we leave and Grayson is asleep in his crib at least he's safe and in a safe place and we ended up passing my parents on the way out of the neighborhood. So they were there, like Grayson was by himself for maybe like two minutes. And we literally could not wait. Like I was like, we need to go now. So we are going to the hospital as fast as we can. Thankfully, we are only 10 minutes away from the hospital. And the whole time I'm just going through wave after wave of contractions. They're getting closer together and they are painful. Like... I'm screaming at the top of my lungs, and I'm a quiet person, like, I do not scream, I'm screaming, it was hurting so bad, Anthony's like, should we go the long way, or should we go the shorter way, but it's got bumps, and I'm just like, I don't know, and I'm screaming the whole time, and poor Anthony, like, that had to be so stressful on him, and I can't focus on anything, he's, like, trying to blast cold air at me to, like, try to get me to, like, be distracted and not think about labor, but I don't think that really helped, and so he's going as fast as he can, and all of a sudden, like, my contractions start getting even more painful, and I start to feel my body start to push, and I can't control it. It was the craziest feeling. If you've ever felt this feeling, like, you'll know what I'm talking about, but it's like your body is pushing the baby out, and you can't stop it. Like, I was trying to hold it in because I was like, I can't have this baby in the car. Like, we need to get to the hospital. But I could not stop from pushing. So wave after wave of contractions start and I'm pushing with each contraction. I'm telling Anthony, I'm pushing, I'm pushing. And he's like, don't push. And I'm like, I can't help it. And so he's like frantic even more. He's speeding. There's slow cars in front of him. Thankfully, I didn't even pay attention, but he told me later on that we hit every light. Uh, we did not have to stop once, which was super lucky because we go through a bunch of lights to get to the hospital. And so we hit all green lights and got there super fast and we're pulling into the parking lot of the hospital. So we're getting close and all of a sudden I feel I have another contraction, I'm pushing, I can't help it, and I feel my water break. My water broke as we were pulling into the hospital. And before this point, Anthony was like, should we go in the regular entrance or should we go in the emergency room? Well, then we get to the hospital, my water breaks, and he's like, no, we're going to the emergency room. So we go, we pull up right outside the emergency room. I've never been to an emergency room before in my life. Didn't even care. I had my shoes, like, not even fully on. They were just, like, slipped on. <laughs> and as soon, like, I don't even think the car had fully stopped. And I bursted out of that car. And Anthony got out, too. And I actually had left the 
Anthony had given me the keys to the car. I don't know why he did that. And so I had actually just left the keys in the car, but we just didn't even care at that point. We ran into the emergency room and Anthony's like, my wife is in labor. And they were all just looking at us like, okay, like they were not frantic at all. And Anthony was like, no, you don't understand. Like her water broke and my pants are like totally wet. I can totally feel like soaked from my water breaking. So as soon as Anthony said her water broke, then they kind of sprung into action a little bit. I was like screaming and there's like people in the emergency room like waiting, like looking at me like this lady's crazy. Um, they start asking me questions. How far along are you? How far apart are your contractions? I couldn't answer them. I was screaming. I was in so much pain. All of a sudden somebody shows up with a um, wheelchair for me to sit in and I was looking at that wheelchair like I don't even know if I can sit right now but thankfully I somehow mustered up the energy to do it. So I went and sat in the wheelchair and I didn't even know what happened to Anthony but he, they wheeled me off and Anthony told me that he asked the person at the front desk like what should I do, our car's right here, should I go with my wife? And the guy was like oh you probably got time, she's just gonna go get checked. You go park your car, get all your things, go to labor and delivery, and then you'll find out where your wife is. And Anthony was like, okay, cool. So he took his time, he went and got the car, he went and parked it, went and got things and went up and was just taking his time, like, we've got time. Back to me. So I'm in the wheelchair, and they're pushing me, and they're wheeling me, and we're going through a million doors. I'm screaming still because I'm having all these contractions, and I'm so painful. They get me into triage which I'm like thinking in my head, like, why are they, why do they have me in triage? They should just put me in a room right now, like, I'm about to have this baby. Um, so I get to triage, and again, they're starting to ask me a million questions. How far along are you? Or how far apart are your contractions? And I can't answer any of them because I'm in so much pain. And so I'm screaming, and I'm like, I'm pushing, he's coming. Like, I could feel like a bulge down there. And I was like, he's coming, my water broke, he's coming. And so they had me stand up, and they were like, you know what, just strip, just strip, just take everything off. And so, so fast, I took my pants off, I took my underwear off, I just like stripped. They were like, get on the bed, let us check you. So I got on this bed, they checked me, they were like, yep, he's like there. You're totally dilated, he's plus two, like he is right there. And I was like, ah, <laughs> freaking out at that point. And I'm like, I need an epidural, I need, I need pain meds, and... Um, they were like, oh, okay, uh, maybe if you can, uh, hold still long enough, like, we can get you an epidural. And so, like, that kind of appeased me a little bit, but looking back on it now, they were totally just trying to keep me calm and just trying to agree with whatever I wanted. And I was never going to get an epidural. There was no time. So, I'm in the bed, and they are wheeling me from triage into a room. I'm screaming in the hallway. I'm sure all the moms on the labor ward are like, what is going on? I don't want to be like that lady. And the nurses are yelling at me, stop screaming, that's not helping you, you need to breathe. And I'm like, I can't help it, I'm like screaming. Anthony said that when he came to labor and delivery, he could hear me screaming. <laughs> And he said he saw me, like, being wheeled in the bed um, to the room, so he knew which room to go to. We get into the room, and there's, like, five or six nurses, and they're all, like, getting everything ready. Like, they know it's go time. And so they wheel me right up to a bed, and they have me hop off and get onto that bed. And um, there was no doctor there delivering because it was, like, 8 o'clock at night. And so they had a midwife end up who was delivering, and not even anyone from my doctor's office, they just had the midwife there doing it, and I was freaking out, like, I want pain meds, I don't want to feel this, because I was so nervous, I was, I've heard about, like, the ring of fire when the baby crowns, and I was just so nervous at pushing this baby out with absolutely no pain meds to help me, and so I'm freaking out, and the nurses are like, you need to stay calm, you need to stay focused, and the midwife is like, he's here, like, you're going to push two times and this baby's going to be here. And so that, like, comforted me, like, okay, he is almost here. Um, at that point, Anthony walks in and he's got all our stuff. He goes and pushes and puts all the stuff down and hurries to get by my side. And then it was time to push. They held my legs up. They had everybody ready. I pushed maybe once or twice and he was here. Like, it was that bad. And while I was so afraid of how um, actually pushing him out was going to feel, 
it actually felt good to push and good to like do all that like the most painful part of the labor was the contractions leading up to that pushing him out didn't hurt at all i didn't feel a ring of fire none of that like it felt good to push and of course as soon as he was out like the pain ended like it felt great so it was wild like anthony got into the room and probably like five minutes later um porter was born like it was just that fast i mean you guys saw i called my mom at eight saying that we were gonna leave and then he was born at 8 20 so 20 minutes later he was born i mean that's how fast it was and it takes us about 10 minutes to get to the hospital so by the time we got to the hospital and porter was born it was like 10 minutes i mean wow that is just wild so looking back on this day i don't know if I was in labor just all day and I had an all day labor and I just didn't realize it or if the labor started at like 6 p.m. when I really started feeling like painful contractions and then it was like two hour labor. I really don't know and I, I don't think I'll ever know. It's just wild because my labor and delivery with Grayson, I was in labor for 12 hours and I pushed for one hour. So they say your second is about half that much. So I was expecting to be in labor for about six to eight hours and then push for maybe a half hour. And this just kind of blew all that away. Anyway, I pushed Porter out and he was totally fine. He was crying. Um, everybody helped. Amazingly, I did not tear at all. Um, I didn't, uh, the placenta came out, it was all intact. Everything was perfect. No complications at all. Twitter was great, and it's like as soon as the birth happened and you know everything turned out great, the room kind of cleared out, and it was just um, me and Anthony and one other nurse who stayed with us and helped care for us, and that was it. Um, I, it was just such a wild labor, and it went that fast, and so we had some skin to skin. And then I breastfed him on both sides and he latched on great and that was awesome. And they weighed him and he was 8 pounds, 3 ounces, so he was bigger than Grayson. Grayson was 7 pounds, 15 ounces, so he was bigger, which I was shocked that I didn't tear because he was bigger. And he was 21 inches long, Grayson was only 20 inches long. And um, his head circumference was about, was um, 13 13 or 14 centimeters, I think. Um, we have a video Anthony took of them getting all these measurements, so I will input that here. Hey, baby Porter. Ooh, you got a squishy little face. Welcome to the world, little guy. Yeah, that's true. Okay, he had it made. It wasn't hard. You, yeah. You tell that poor mama that she. You did so good. You came so good. Eight three. Eight pounds three. Uh -huh. There we go. Hang on. Now it's moving again. Hang on a second, Meg. I know. Hang on, dude. Come on. I know. It's eight three, and then, of course, it wants to. Good God. Go with thirty seven hundred, Meg. Okay. I know, it's what I said. It's That's like all over the place. Dark. That's why I was like. Okay. Yeah, you're nice. <laughs> <laughs> I get in the way, let me know. Megan, I got 13 and a quarter. No, okay. That's about the only video we got. It was so fast and I was in so much pain that we had no time to get the camera out and record any of this. Like that was how fast it happened. And I'm really sad because I wanted to record all this. And so that's why I'm sitting here telling you guys this because I'm not going to be able to remember it with all this detail and the years to come. And I want to talk about it here so that I can come back and review it, you know, sometime in the future. But it was just so wild. Um, they had us stay in the room. We had to stay in for a couple hours. Um, they, thankfully I had went earlier that day and got a COVID test and so they were waiting on the results to come in. Um, the results ended up coming in at like 11.30 that night and I tested negative which was really good and so they were able to put us in a regular room and, 
in the postpartum room where we could stay the rest of our time. And um, if I had tested positive, they would have put us in a isolation room, so I'm just glad that we didn't have to deal with all that. Anthony got the whole porter. Um, of course, I got the whole porter. And it was just us. Um, after things had settled down, I called my parents, and then we called Anthony's parents and kind of relayed the whole story to them and um, sent lots of pictures to my family and Anthony's family, and everybody was just shocked at how fast it happened. Uh, and honestly, I was in a daze. Like, the whole time we were in the hospital, I was just in disbelief that this had all happened. And the whole time, Anthony was just telling me, like, you should have listened to me. It's your fault you didn't get pain meds because you were in denial. We should have went to the hospital a lot earlier. And, he, I mean, he's totally right. I should have listened to him, and I didn't. <laughs> So next, next labor, next time I have a child, it's just going to be, I feel like I'm going to be scared because I'm not going to want this to happen again because we literally almost delivered in the car. Like if we would have been a half hour away from the hospital, I would have delivered in the car. I mean, it's just wild to think that. So I feel like next time I go into labor, if I'm not induced beforehand, which I might just want to induce early, but if next time I go into labor... Um, I feel like as soon as I feel any pain, I'm going to be like, we need to go to the hospital now. Because this one happened so fast that I feel like the third one's going to happen as, that fast as well. That's, you know, I don't need to worry about that for a long time. I mean, Porter's only a week old, but it's just crazy to think, like, what's going to happen with the next labor? I don't know. Yeah, that is the crazy birth story with uh, Porter. Uh, the rest of the hospital stay was uneventful. We stayed a little over 24 hours, probably around 36 hours total we stayed in the hospital. Um, and we just kind of got to bond as a family. No visitors were allowed because of coronavirus, and so it was just us three. And um, Porter passed all of his tests, his hearing test, and um, his blood test, and his 24-hour test, and all that. It was actually really cool because they did a lot of the tests in the room with us because they were trying to minimize the amount of time they took him out of the room. So we got to see them perform the hearing tests and we got to see them do the 24-hour check and things like that. So that was really cool to see. Um, but you know, when you're in the hospital, you just don't get that good of sleep. They're checking on you every few hours and you're trying to sleep and you can't and you're in a different place and so it was just difficult. So we were tired, but not as tired as what we were with Grayson. With Grayson, he started cluster feeding right away, and he did not want to be put down at all. And so we had, like, zero sleep with him. With Porter, it was much better. He slept a lot better. He fed a lot, like, less frequently, and so we were able to get a lot of sleep in, which was awesome. And then, uh, yeah, we were released from the hospital, so I had him Monday night at 8.20, and we were released from the hospital at noon on Wednesday, and that was it. So, that is my crazy birth story with Porter. Almost had him in the car, almost didn't make it to the hospital. Ten minutes after getting to the hospital, we had him. It was super crazy, but I'm so glad we made it. I'm so glad he's here and healthy and no complications, and I'm sad I didn't get any of it recorded, but I'm glad I can actually just sit here and talk about it and have these memories forever, and his birth story will forever be a crazy story that I will tell um, over and over again, I'm sure, for the years to come. But thank you for sitting here. I know this is a really, really long video, so thank you for hanging in here if you did. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next video. Um, I will include some videos and pictures that I took on my phone of the days that we were in the hospital, and our um, going home video when we arrived home, I will show that as well. So stay tuned for more videos, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!